How's it going guys? Joe Church here with Norseman Custom Cycles, back with another video for you. And today I want to be talking about your throttle cables and how to maintain them and prolong the life of them and also how to adjust them properly. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. Alright, so the first thing I like to do is I like to get a flat jack, just like this one right here, and put it underneath the motorcycle and get this motorcycle upright because for the first portion of this I want that front tire to be facing straight forward. I'm holding the camera with my hand, so if it's a little unsteady, I apologize in advance. But I'm underneath the motorcycle, and I'm looking for good spots to put this jack. And I want to make sure things like these wires right here aren't underneath the frame or anything like that. So I'm going to tuck those up and out of the way so that I can put this jack right here. Because I want it to be on the front portion of this motorcycle. Put it right there on the kickstand side of the motorcycle, right behind the kickstand. I'm basically just making sure, down here making sure that the exhaust or nothing's in the way, that I'm not going to cause any problems when I go to jack this motorcycle up. Last thing you want to do is cause a little bit of damage. I'm going to get this motorcycle up in the air, and I'll be back. Alright, so I got my front wheel facing forward, and I got a little bit of weight on this front tire, where that's not just, the uh, steering stem's not going to just flop around on me. The motorcycle's nice and steady. Now I'm going to get you guys up to the throttle cables. All right, now I'm up here at the throttle cable adjustments, okay? And on a stock Harley Davidson's, uh, they're gonna be 3 8 inch wrenches that you're gonna use to loosen these jam nuts. But don't quote me on this, but I believe these are drag specialties cables and they are 5 16 to loosen this jam nut. So I got my two wrenches here. I'm gonna put one here and another right there. And all I'm gonna do to loosen this is just right there and then it's loosened and I can back this jam nut out like so, and I'll move on to the next one. I'll do it the exact same way. Just like that, and then back this jam nut out. Now I want to collapse these cables all the way down. All right, so the next thing I like to do is come down here to the air filter and remove this top cover. And this is a 3 16 Allen. Now that I have that cover removed, I exposed the uh, 5 30 seconds Allens right here. And I'm going to remove all those and to get this air filter off. All right, so now that I have all that removed, you can see we have our... Uh, throttle slide here with our slide needle and then right behind that we have our throttle plate. Now what I'm trying to accomplish here is have that throttle plate held wide open throughout this procedure and the way I like to do it is I have this half inch extension which almost everybody has and I just kind of snake it in here like this being careful to go around that needle so I don't damage it and I'll come from this side of the carburetor And I'll make that throttle plate go wide open, and I'll just slide it in just a little bit. And see how it's open now? Do you see it? So I got that throttle plate wide open like that. I didn't damage my needle, and I didn't damage my slide at all. All right, so now that I got my throttle plate wide open, the next thing I like to do is I like to take a piece of folded up cardboard like this here. Anytime I start working with this housing or anything to do with this area up here, uh, I stick this piece of cardboard right in here on this brake lever because there's a little plastic tip back there that works the brake switch and if you start unloosening these uh, these torque screws on these housings or uh, on this housing right here it could uh, pop that plastic tip off and your rear brake light will be on all the time. All right, so now that my cardboard's inside my brake lever, I'm going to begin the process of removing this cover here. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take this 1 8 Allen down here and just remove this bolt. Typically, there's a T25 Torx screw here and one up here as well. But on this particular housing, there is not because it's not a stock housing. It's an aftermarket housing. 
All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove, well, I'm going to loosen these two T27 torque screws here. And what I like to do first, I like to mark on this housing right here and then on the handlebar and make like a little alignment mark so that I know for a fact that I can put this right back in a position that it was prior to me loosening these so that I don't mess with the uh, customer's, you know, mirror adjustment or anything. All right, so at first I couldn't figure out uh, how to get this cover off because I thought I had all the screws out, but I did not. Uh, there's another screw right under here, so I ended up having to take this entire housing off in order to get to it. But it presented a perfect opportunity to uh, show you this plastic little tit thing that I was talking about. This is the piece that'll break off right here. And if it breaks off, your uh, brake light will be full on all the time. All right, so now that I have all my screws loose, removed, uh, I can expose my throttle cables here with the little brass dowels that they sit in. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But they got these little brass dowels. And there's tons of slack on all my cables. It makes this whole operation easy because I got my throttle plate wide open. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove it like this. Making sure I don't drop that brass dowel because it can sometimes be hard to find. I take that and I'm just going to set it right in my little magnetic tray. The brass dowels are not magnetic, obviously because they're brass, but I like to have something there to just kind of hold on to them. And then to get this one, I just roll the throttle back like I'm hitting the throttle. And just pop it off like that. Set it right there. And you see that these cables have kind of been through the mill, especially this one. Looks like it's about to start fraying here. It's all kinked up. Uh, unfortunately, it's pretty normal on throttle cables. All right, so now that I have these exposed, this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and lube your cables. And uh, I'm using the Genuine Harley Lube. Uh, mostly just because I have a ton of it left over from when I used to work in a Harley shop. But uh, any cable lube will do just fine. And I just put a little bit on like that. And I let it work its way down throughout the entire cable. I'll do the same over here. Basically that lubricant is just going to get inside the, the windings of those cables. And it's going to work its way all the way down through the cable slowly. Alright, so now that I have my grip removed, I like to take a little bit of this... Uh, emery here and I just kind of clean up this whole area now that I got the area cleaned up I just wipe all that excess stuff that I removed off of the rag real quick and I've seen a lot of guys when I was working in shops not do this and uh, I never understood why uh, I've literally fixed guys that swore up and down that they needed throttle cables fixed their whole issue just by cleaning it up like that and putting a little bit of this on it. It's called uh, dry slide. And this stuff is great for this, this purpose right here. And basically it's just like a, a graphite that goes on as a lubricant, but then it dries. Just like that. And then I'll mix it up. Just kind of spread it out like that. And I'll let that dry for about five minutes. And I'll come back and I'll install my grip. All right, so as you can see, I got my graphite on here. It's all nice and dried. Uh, while I was waiting, I went ahead and uh, put a little bit of Dawn dish soap in here and then cleaned it out and I hit it with some shop air. And by the time I got done with that, uh, my graphite was all nice and dry. Throttle cables are already lubricated. So I'm going to get in the process of putting all this back together. So I put on my grip. Then I take this front cable first. And I install my brass dowel on it. Then I roll the throttle back, just like I'm hitting the throttle. Slide it right in the groove, just like so. Then I just take the next brass dowel on this rear cable here. Install it like that. And because my throttle plate's held wide open, I can roll this throttle forward and install the brass dowel right here. Had I not held my throttle plate wide open like that, like we did earlier, I'd be fighting the, the throttle plate the whole time I'm trying to install this cable. So that's why I do that, is so that this cable goes in just nice and easy. 
and I just reinstall my cover like so. All right, so I have everything back on the motorcycle, but uh, I don't have it torqued down or nothing. It's just kind of loose. And at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and align uh, my switch housing with my hand control clamp. And I'm just going to kind of get everything right where I want it, as little cracks between them as possible. I'm going to get nice and tight up against this, uh, this little groove here in the handlebar. And I'm going to line up my little alignment lines. And I'm going to torque these uh, hand control clamps screws to 80 inch pounds. All right, so now these are torqued to 80 inch pounds. I'm going to go ahead and torque this uh, switch housing screw to 35 inch pounds. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adjust our throttle cable. Now with the wheel still facing forward, we're going to adjust our throttle cable to the throttle cam, which is this right here. And is actually what moves when you pull the throttle back and it's connected to the throttle plate inside the carburetor. We're going to, we want to adjust that until the throttle cam touches the cam stop, which is this piece right here. You can see the brass screw and this little uh, piece of metal plate that's sitting here. That's your cam stop. And you're going to adjust your throttle cable until your throttle cam touches the cam stop. But since we have this extension in here holding our throttle plate wide open, it's already touching. So all we need to do is remove the slack from that cable. I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to clarify which cable up top is the throttle cable and which one's the idle cable a little later. All right, so I'm adjusting the throttle cable, and you can see the slack start to come out of it. And you just take it till there's a... Uh, it's not tight, but there's just no excess slack in that cable. All right, so now that our uh, throttle cable is adjusted roughly to the point where we want it, we're going to hold this... See how everything kind of moves when I push on it? We're going to hold the uh, throttle cam up and then just slowly and easily remove this extension and let it release. All right, so now that our throttle cable is roughly in the position where we know we're gonna want it, in order to adjust the uh, idle cable, you should uh, turn your motorcycle to full right lock, like this here. This cable here, the one up front, is the throttle cable. As you can see, it's already adjusted. This cable here is known as your idle cable, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that now. All right, so I have both my throttle cables adjusted right about where I want them. And now I'm going to tighten the jam nut. And I'm not going to use a lot of pressure on them. I'm just, I'll show you right now. I just take them like this, and I just kind of go, just like that right there. I barely tweak them in. They don't need a lot of pressure. I'm just right there. That's all I need. So I got a little bit of free play in my throttle cables. I can feel it in the grip. I'm getting full throttle. You can hear it, that little click. So I have full throttle movement. Throttle plate's getting opened all the way. And I got a smooth return. Nothing feels like it's binding. There's no grind, uh, grinding or grit or anything anywhere in the process. And this throttle actually feels really good. All right, now I wanna show you the amount of slack that I give my throttle cables. So I'm not actually hitting the throttle yet. And see how that cable's jumping around right there? And they're not overly tight. Nothing really feels like it's binding or anything. That's about the uh, amount of slack you want in your cables. Excess tension can cause the cables to uh, wear out faster than they need to. All right, the next thing I like to do is I make sure that I'm getting uh, the full opening of my throttle at full left lock. I do that by rolling on the throttle and I reach in here and I touch the, uh, the throttle cam. And if it's tight up against the cam stop, then I know I'm good. But if there's any movement in it, then I know that I need to go back and redo some of my adjustments. The next thing you do is you install your air cleaner. Then I install my air cleaner cover. All 
right, so that's the throttle cable procedure that I do at every single service. I take the grip off, I do everything at every service, and I guarantee you that if you do it that way that I just showed you, you'll be giving your throttle cables all the vitamins and minerals that it needs to grow old and be happy and have a long, fulfilling life if you go down the road. So, with that being said, if you made it this far, I appreciate you sticking around. And if you liked the video, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. I don't care if it's a one word comment or whatever, uh, to really help the channel grow a little bit. And if you liked this video, go look at my other videos. I got some really cool stuff planned for this. Uh, anyway, this is Joe Church at Norseman Custom Cycles, and I hope you guys have a great day.